Hello everyone, Todd Shellnut with CFI Pro Courses and once again back with you with my most favorite day of the week, Regulation Wednesday. Now this question this week comes from one of our viewers who asked a question about last week's question with the VFR fuel reserves. And the question was, is there any anomaly with the IFR regulation dealing with 91.167? Well, there actually is. Uh, it is most common that when a pilot is asked this question on an IFR check ride by an examiner, how much fuel do you need to fly on an IFR flight from point A to point B if the outside weather conditions are prevailing VFR? We can use the word CAVU if you want to. That's C-A-V-U, clear above, visibility unlimited. So if your IFR flight that you planned and filed, and you're talking ATC, if it's completely clear all the way to your destination, or if you can remain VFR, what are the fuel reserves for 91.167? Well, let's pop on over to the regs and take a look at it and see what it says. Let's look at the very top there and let's just read the title. So the title of 91.167 is actually Fuel Requirements for Flight in IFR Conditions. It doesn't say for IFR, it says in IFR Conditions. And then it states, no person may operate a civil aircraft in IFR conditions unless it carries enough fuel considering weather reports and forecasts and weather conditions to complete the flight to the first airport of intended landing. Okay, except as provided in paragraph B of the section, fly from that airport to the alternate airport and then fly after that for 45 minutes normal cruising speed or for helicopters fly for 30 minutes normal cruising speed, blah, blah, blah. So the matter of the fact is if you're going to be flying on an IFR flight plan and it's CAVU outside or if you can remain VFR your entire flight, you only need to maintain your VFR fuel requirements and not those fuel requirements stated under 91.167. So I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot of discussion about this, as there normally is, and I welcome it. So please put your comments down below and let's talk this one out if you don't agree with me. I just read the regs and read them for face value, and I don't think you can misinterpret that any other way. And there's also many letters of interpretations that back up what I'm saying. You can go to Google the FAA letter of interpretations and then put in 91.167 in the search box and you can read all the LOIs that I read. I'm Todd Sheldon with CFI Pro Courses and I hope you enjoyed another great Regulations Wednesday. I'm traveling this week back out to Texas again, but I'll be back in Hotlanta next week and I'll have another great episode for you then. Maybe something a little bit more difficult to to dive into next week. Y'all have a great week and we'll see you at the airport. Bye-bye.